Hi, this is Frode and welcome back to Actualize Notes TV, where we will have fun exploring the great book Fully Engaged by Thomas Sterner. Fully Engaged, subtitle, Using the Practicing Mind in Daily Life. Thomas Sterner is uh, the founder and CEO of the Practicing Mind Institute and an expert of uh, PMF, Present Moment Functioning. He's also one of those uh, few people I like to call a good human being. Capital G, capital H, capital B. And uh, he, uh, we have already featured his The Practicing Mind. And I like to think of The Practicing Mind like uh, a roadmap, where he uh, helps us explore what it means to have a practicing mind and uh, uh, ma really master our minds. And uh, whereas Fully Engaged is more like he's taking us on a tour and taking us to the different places we need to look at and showing us the techniques we need to become fully engaged. And uh, if you're a student, teacher, entrepreneur, athlete, artist, whatever, a person who wants to master their minds, I think you'll love the book. I have just written a note on uh, my seven favorite big ideas and uh, you can get access to them by following the first link in the description. For now, we'll have fun playing around with five of my very favorite big ideas that we can apply to our lives. First one is thought awareness training. One of the key lessons we need to learn if uh, we want to master our minds is we need to start doing a consistent practice. We need to tr really train our minds before we can really achieve mastery of our minds. And we do that through what Tom Sterner calls thought awareness training, or in other words, meditation. And uh, what this helps us do is to connect to the observer within us and grow the observer. So he makes a distinction between being and an observer of our thoughts and a participant, participant of our thoughts. And uh, when we are an obser observer of our thoughts, we are basically uh, recognizing, as he says, you are not your thoughts. You are the one who experiences your thoughts. That's the key point here. You are not your thoughts. You are the one who experiences your thoughts. And that's what the observer realizes, who just observes everything without attaching himself to the thoughts that are churning around in your mind like a kicked beehive. And uh, when you can take the perspective of the, of the observer, you are able to be a master of your mind and achieve a certain clarity of your mind. You're able to be much more productive and have this calm and peaceful state of being. When you are a participant of your thoughts, identifying yourself with the thoughts and thinking that the thoughts that come into your head uh, are basically you, who you are, then uh, you become a victim of your thoughts. And uh, that makes uh, the world a pretty anxious and stressful and unproductive and mentally foggy place to be in. And therefore, we want to start a consistent practice of thought awareness training. Another great uh, perspective to look at it, what happens when you strengthen the observer. Tim Ferriss, in his book Tools of Titans, uses a great image. He says that through 20 minutes of consistent meditation, I can become the commander looking out at the battlefield from a hilltop. You gain a much better perspective and you can see that some troops down the battlefield don't even, aren't even fighting in the right battles. They're wasting too much of their energy and too much of their time in the wrong places in their lives, in their daily lives. Whereas the commander can see where the real effort and energy is supposed to be directed. That's thought awareness training. You are not your thoughts, you are the one who experiences your thoughts. And by the way, if you have not, you aren't meditating yet, you might have mentioned that, you might have noticed that I mentioned it a lot. Here's a quick lesson in how you do it. First, you just sit down or kneel and uh, observe your breath. Then uh, it will be, uh, you will, will feel tempted to uh, control your breath, but the idea is to just observe the breath. You're becoming an observer, right? And the second step is um, whenever your mind wanders, just like uh, he uses the metaphor of a toddler who wants to explore things and try new things out and solve problems. 
with your mind wanders like that and try to start thinking about everything in the past or the future, something that you have to get done or something you did, then you bring your mind back to your breath or your mantra. You can also use a phrase that you repeat again and again and bring your focus back to your mantra. And then you just repeat. Every time your mind wanders, bring it back and observe your breath. So, what uh, most people will uh, recognize when uh, they uh, start meditating is that they will have bad meditations because they feel like they can't control their minds, their minds are just running everywhere and they're always trying to catch their minds. But what uh, Thomas um, makes the point, he makes the point that the fact that you're actually noticing your thoughts means that you're having a good meditation. Because if you di hadn't developed the strength of your mind to notice the thoughts and through meditation, you wouldn't even be able to notice them. But you would still be experiencing the negative results from your thoughts. So, bad meditations are really good meditations. The times when your mind is just running all around crazily. Mine did this morning. I meditated for 33 minutes and uh, yeah, it was not very pleasant. And uh, what happens when you, every time in that microsecond when you catch your mind from wandering, you're growing your observer and strengthening your will. Basically the par highest uh, uh, part of you that uh, will perform the best choices in every single situation if your will is infinite. And just strengthening your will through meditation. Okay, we'll leave it at that. Interpretation. This is a really cool idea. He says that interpretation creates experience. The way we interpret something will dictate how we will experience it, whether we will experience it in a good way or in a bad way. And he uses the example of walking the board. Imagine that you have a board of about 12 inches wide and... Uh, or just 12 inches wide and 50 feet long. Put it on ground and tell someone to walk over it. That person will easily walk over it without hesitating because they will look at it as a simple and safe task. But if you place it on the, between the rooftops of two buildings 50 feet in the air, then it will become a really scary. You know, you, your mind will interpret the task as a really scary one. And uh, that's uh, basically it. it we are, um, how we interpret situations will dictate whether we will act in uh, an empowered way or not. And uh, one example I have of this is uh, connected with what Pierre Hadot, the classical philosopher, says in The Inner Citadel. And uh, he basically unpacks a lot of wisdom from the Stoics. And he, use, he shares a technique that the Stoics used to gain equanimity. And uh, that includes two steps. Observe what happens without judging it. For example, the cup fell, uh, fell down on the floor. Second step is describe what happened. And then you just simply say what happened. The cup fell down on the floor without adding a third step which is to start judging it as good or bad. Oh my god, the cock fell down on the floor, now I have to clean up this mess. But another thing you can do, instead of the third step, insert another new step and ask yourself, what does this mean? And thereby you can t interpret the experience as something that might help you grow stronger by developing your patience and your equanimity and your cleanliness by cleaning up the um, the mess you made. Or you can interpret it as just a bad thing that nothing good comes out of. So, interpretation creates experience. Don't have any, don't have any more really practical examples right now, but I'm sure that we will be exploring it a lot more in the coming years. Realistic time frames is the fourth big idea. The, uh, Thomas says that there's a really big problem when we um, set huge goals without any information whatsoever about how long those goals should take to achieve. For example, we say, I want to lose 30 pounds. In three weeks? Yeah, that should do it, right? That should be completely possible. 
And the result of that is, of course, that you feel a savage hunger during that time, you're frustrated, and you inevitably gain the weight back on, because it's not a sustainable strategy. But what we want to get really good at is gather the necessary information by looking at people that have achieved the goals we want to achieve. For example, our neighbors, people we know, our heroes and our role models, and ask ourselves, what, how long did they take to achieve that goal? How did they do it? And what can I do to achieve that goal? And uh, we want to set really realistic time frames. As Brian Tracy says, there are no unrealistic goals, only unrealistic deadlines. So do you have an unrealistic time frame for the goal that you have set for yourself? Remember, your goal might be very, very, very good, and um, it's uh, something that's very worthy to achieve. But you might have uh, need to just stretch out the time zone a little bit, and you will still uh, achieve it. But maybe you won't if it's too short and you stress yourself out. So, in short, create realistic time frames. Gather the information you need, and go forward. The fifth big idea is a really cool one. Thomas says that emotions are like resonating frequencies. Like frequencies strengthen each other and uh, kind of they kind of build upon each other. So if uh, somebody comes um, to you and are angry, they're resonating at a specific frequency. And if you become angry too, you also start using the same frequency and it becomes much stronger. But if they come in at you and start um, and are angry at you and you are calm, then they will kind of, they will pretty fast feel pretty stupid and it will feel um, uh, like there's no use in being angry and they will start calming down, just like you. And that, of course, creates thought or awareness training. You need to be able to notice that you're feeling anger and it bubbles up, but then calm yourself down. And he talks about premeditated procedures, preparing yourself before the event by uh, knowing what, how you will react when a person is angry, for example. And, uh, yeah, you can uh, check out the book for more on that. But, resonating frequencies. Emotions. Resonating frequencies. And, uh, I, uh, another example is from the Stoic philosopher Epictetus. If, uh, uh, most people get really insulted, uh, get really... Um, sad or angry when somebody insults them. But if you just take on the position of a rock, how can a rock be insulted? If someone go walks up to a rock and starts insulting it, starts venting their wrath and says uh, many, many bad things, what will happen? There's no, basically no resonating frequency, they, the rock won't care. And uh, in the same way, what will a person gain by venting their anger on a rock? Or throwing insults? So, uh, another story is uh, from uh, uh, my Vipassana meditation retreat. 10 hours of meditation daily for 10 days, kind of a mental boot camp. And uh, Esen Gwenka, the teacher, told us a story about if somebody comes at you and starts venting their wrath on you, and throwing insults, tantrums, and their anger, that it's basically like they're coming and uh, presenting you with a gift uh, or a present. And uh, you basically have a choice. You can accept that present and start getting angry back at them, or you can simply say, I do not accept your present. I choose not to have your anger. You can have it for yourself. So, realize that emotions are like resonating frequencies. When someone resonates as a certain emotion, you can change it, hopefully, by resonating at a different one. And this also works for joy and happiness, you can um, help others get more happy by being happy yourself. And uh, that's easier said than done. But remember, emotions resonating frequencies. And do you have realistic time frames for your goals? Interpretation creates experience. Observe what happens, describe it, and then ask yourself, what does this mean? And choose an empowering interpretation. This helps me grow, or... Um, this can help me develop my virtues, my patience, my persistence, my discipline. Bad meditation 
it's really a good meditation when your mind wanders and you go catching it all the time because every time you get a mental rep and strengthen the observer within you, strengthen your willpower, your ability to make yourself do what you should do, when you should do it, whether you feel like it or not. And finally, thought awareness training. We're going to develop the observer within ourselves to realize that we are not our thoughts. We are the ones who experience our thoughts. So we can choose more productive thoughts ourselves. All right, so very quick look at Fully Engaged. Got a bit fired up on this one. And our uh, next book will be on The Tools by Phil Stutz and Bear Michaels. Really a powerful book that I'm having fun incorporating into my life. For now, what's the number one idea that most resonated with you? And what's the first step you can take towards applying it to your life starting today? Get on that. Thanks for watching. I'm looking forward to sharing more wisdom with you soon. Have another awesome day and let's actualize so we can give our greatest gifts in heroic service to the world. See ya. Hi, this is Froude. You might know me from the work I do on YouTube, but I also want to tell you that you can gain access to a ton of more wisdom at my website, actualizer.me. And here, I focus all of my energies on answering the question, how can I help you actualize your life on a day-to-day -day basis? Because I know that even though you want to actualize your life and develop yourself, you're too busy to read all day. And that's why I'm all about sharing wisdom made practical. Fun, inspiring, and practical wisdom you can apply to your life immediately. And I do it through something I call actualized notes. They would include big ideas from 100 plus of the best and most transformative books and optimal living. It's notes from a fellow actualizer who wants to embody and help you embody these ideas more consistently in your life. And these actualized notes include 100 plus practical PDFs, which is six page PDFs with condensed wisdom ready for use. These are recorded into 100 plus MP3 guides because all ANs are recorded as MP3 so you can actualize on the go. I also create 10 to 20 minute ANTV episodes, which I upload on YouTube. And these are again converted into MP3 files so you can get access to them on the Actualize podcast. And all this work includes uh, 700, over 750 big ideas from ancient philosophers, modern scientists, and your own common sense, explained for easy use. You can gain instant access at my website, actualizer.me, and it's, you can get a free 30-day trial, and then it will be 10 bucks per month. You can cancel it whenever you want, and I price the membership program so low, so you can in tap into practical wisdom no matter how you're standing financially. All right. I hope you'll join me on this hero's journey of actualizing our potential. See ya.